welcome to Lifetime in Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I am your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Psycho Party Planner. Psycho Party Planner stars Lindsay McKeon, Catherine Dillon, Katrina Begin. Is that how you say that? Katrina Begin. I don't know. I need to look it up. And Marco Dapper. And he was Dapper. It is Katrina Begin. It is. I'm right. (laughs) On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no, thank you. Don't want to watch that movie. So what are we going to do to Psycho Party Planner? Pour it up, of course. Build on myself. Um, well, that didn't go well. Why am I doing this with my left hand? There we go. Don't waste wine, everyone. This is a PSA for don't waste wine. That's never happened in, like, all this recording that I've not been paying attention to spilled wine all over myself. But here we are. Woo! And I'm back. If you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back because I am about to do a quick little recap starting now. The movie starts with Lindy and her shirtless husband having an argument. The last time I checked, my only job was to be a good wife and to become a good mother. Yeah. Well, at least we can thank my mother for insisting on that prenup. He's an asshole and wants a divorce because she can't get pregnant. He takes the rude comments a step too far and ends up dead at the bottom of the stairs. Cut to Kayla and her zaddy husband, Jason. They are raising the oldest 16-year-old I've ever seen. Her name is Carrie. To make things more absurd, this 25-year-old actress has to talk about school and pretend to be excited for her sweet 16 party. Also, she wears a backpack. A grown-ass woman wearing a backpack. Kayla and Carrie interview party planners and are torn between Delcy, who would be my pick, and Lindy. When Lindy overhears that they're gonna go with Delcy, she marches over to Delcy's house and begs for the job. Wine drunk, Delcy is not having it and just wants to spend her evening airing out her ma back and spending time with her dog Cher. Well, again, I truly am sorry for your loss, but uh, if you're so hard up for cash, you could try selling that handbag. It's worth at least $2,000 in mint condition, which it is. Conversely, this job means too much to me to pass up as well. Lindy doesn't let that happen because she murders Delcy and steals her dog, Cher, too. And then she looks at a snow globe. Lindy lands the job and inserts herself into Carrie's life. She follows her to school and watches her on her dance team rehearsals. When the coach is too hard on Carrie, Lindy stalks the coach and threatens to reveal an affair the coach is having with the basketball coach who is married. Kayla talks to her shirtless husband about her concerns she has with Lindy. She thinks Lindy and Carrie are beginning to be too close. Kayla's right to be worried because Lindy drinks wine with Carrie and places doubts in her mind about the possibility of being adopted. Turns out Carrie is adopted, and when she asks her parents, they confirm that she was in fact adopted. It is a very dramatic scene, and it is great. You were ours. When you were less than a month old, you were ours then. I'm adopted! You've always been ours. I'm adopted! And you both kept it from me. And now there's nothing that can be said anymore. Since no one has died in a while, Kayla's assistant at her art studio is murdered with a hammer thrown ninja star style. Kayla fires Lindy after talking to Carrie's coach who informs her of the blackmail attempt. Lindy goes off the deep end and leaves a lot of voicemails and then gets out a gun. Then she attacks Kayla and the coach and kidnaps them. The Sweet 16 party is finally happening and everyone thinks Carrie looks amazing. I think she looks budget bridal. Lindy shows up at the party and is generally iconic. Hey, this is Carrie's Sweet 16, and I'm not about to let anyone ruin it. So get out of here before I have you arrested for minor in possession. Jason realizes that his wife is missing and texts her. Where are you now? Lindy has Kayla's phone, and when she receives the text, Carrie notices and realizes that her mother is in trouble. The coach and Lindy free themselves in a comically too real scene. 
Are you okay? Oh, that bitch is nuts. Is that me taking off a band-aid? Lindy catches them before they can escape. She kills the coach and then screams that Gary is her daughter. I'm not sure if she really is, but that's not really the point of this movie. The camp here is high key and I'm loving it. Carrie shows up armed with Charlie, her teenage boyfriend, and a snow globe. Lindy, of course, is good with the snow globe. I'm always ready for Christmas, so why not? One month later, Carrie shows off a terrible painting and everyone is happy. And that is Psycho Party Planner. What we love about Psycho Party Planner is that it is over the top and ridiculous. But like in the best way. It's great. We have a 27-year-old playing a teenager. Gotta love that. You know, it makes things a little less weird when you're seeing terrible things happen to an adult playing a teenager rather than like an actual teenager, like getting stalked and, you know, all the terrible things that happen in this movie to her. It's just funny to see a grown ass woman (laughs) walking around with like a little backpack talking about her sweet 16 party. The actors all understood that they were in a Lifetime movie. They were going for camp. They were going for the melodrama. I loved it. Their acting was spot on. Some people might say that it's a little too melodramatic, but for me, it was pitch perfect. Marco Dapper, can we talk about him? Like with the beard and like such a not typical lifetime leading man. And I loved it. Another character worth noting, she was a small part here. She was the other woman who almost got the job played by Stephanie Black. And this actress is phenomenal. She's so good at like playing that little like Little bitchy digs. Loved it. I really identified with her. Am, do I have a dog named Cher? And am I drinking my Malbec and letting it air out? Yes, I am. Well, I don't have a dog, but I do have Malbec. Of course, we cannot not talk about the Psycho Party Planner herself. She was spot on with the sass. The, the writing for her was such a clear villain that we understood she was the villain. And then she just kept being worse and worse and worse and doing like more things that were terrible. And you're like, this woman is the worst. But that is the point. We want her to be the worst. It's called Psycho Party Planner. Let's see how psycho she can be. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. Since this was a family drama, and this is where people can get into a trap when you're trying to cast POCs, you got the family. The family is a white family. I don't know what you could do to diversify the family. Maybe just have a whole different race for the family. But we did have some characters. We had the character of Shonda, played by Charles D. Ballesteros. Savannah, played by Winter Grace Williams. Misty, played by Gabriela Quesada Bloomgarden. Susan, played by Diane Sue. And Reggie, played by Manny Streets. It's a lot of POC representation there. Good job, Lifetime. Keep it up. Keep finding those actors who are out there who are looking for parts that aren't criminals or thugs. Like, yes, let's give them real parts in movies. This is a great job at that. So good job. And I think that wraps up today's episode. If you want more Lifetime on Court, you can find us at LifetimeOnCourt.com. Don't forget to listen to the podcast available wherever you get your podcast, also called Lifetime on Court. And you can follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime on Court. We watch these movies so you don't have to, but if you do, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below about a movie you'd like to cover or your thoughts on this movie. I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much for checking back in. And yeah, that's it. Okay, goodbye.